But we are here today to celebrate these men. Our, our friend, Pastor Cornelius Bass, he's no stranger to the Olivet family. Matter of fact, we love him. Uh, we love the fellowship that God has allowed us to share over the years. And uh, thank God for, for him and thank God for his beautiful church that some of you have come to, to celebrate with us. Uh, but the question that's always raised at this place, at this hour, is, is there any word from the Lord? Amen. And the faithful response is, there is a word from the Lord. Can we stand to our feet, point at Pastor Bass, Pastor Bass, is there any word from the Lord? Pastor Bass, is there any word from the Lord? Pastor Bass, preach the word of God. to say thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Not only that, but you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son. Who came down and hung, bled, and died on Calvary. Got up the third day morning with all power in his hand. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, sir. And now he's sitting on the right hand of his father. Interceding for us, uh -huh. and we just want to say thank you. Thank you Lord. Now, Lord, we don't need nothing to hear the word. Well. 
So I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Sins of omission and commission. Put them in the sea where they won't rise against me no more. Now, Lord, we thank you for the lying down of last night. Watched over us all night long. And then early this morning, you touched us with a finger of love. Eyes came open and saw a brand new day. And we just want to say thank you. He was to put our clothes on and drive down a dangerous highway. Brought us safe here. And we want to say thank you. We come today to lift you up. We come today to glorify you. We come today to praise your name. Because you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you have your uh, Bible, we'll be coming from the theme today. Amen, amen. We're just going to look at verses 1 and 2. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Flemings. We want to thank God for Pastor Matthew and Minister Williams and the other ministers. I want to thank my members for being here today. Amen, amen. Our men say we want to wear our shirts today. Because y'all have our, y'all's on, so we want to put ours on. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for them being here today. Amen. 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 Uh, verses 1 and 2 say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be proved what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Amen. The grass will it, and the flower will fade it, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to use your theme. Brothers, a change is needed. Amen. Amen. A change is needed. Amen. 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 Not only with the brothers, but everybody who is a Christian, a change is needed. Amen. This, this word change is defined as to become or make a, make a difference. When you use, the, use this word in a past tense, it means to have become or being made different. No matter how long you've been a Christian, we still need to be changing every day to be like Jesus. Season changes. Yes, sir. Time changes. Uh -huh. Nation changes. Music style changes. Technology change. Yes, sir. Our culture change. Our personal life change. Our marriage life change. Yes, our body change. Our financial status change. But it's hard to get the human race to change. <laughs> Have we got a witness there? Yeah, we, we don't want to change. We, we, we want to stay, remain the same. But on this Christian journey, it takes some changes if you're going to follow Jesus. Did y'all going to help me out? Although God never changes, but he is constant moving, towards, uh, moving us towards perfection yes, sir. every day. Every day. Yeah, he, he, he is constantly trying to move us to perfection and change to be like his son, right. Jesus. Right. 
Some people, Pastor Fleming, will never change until they see the light. Other people will never change until they get a taste of a little fire up under their feet. Yes, but it's strange, it's strange, Pastor Matthew. Uh, we pray every day. But we seldom ask the Lord to change our character. But we always asking God to change our circumstances. Is that right? It, it takes a lot. Uh, a, a willpower yeah. to change. Yeah. Sir Isaac Newton first law of motion stated everything continue in state of rest unless it's compelled to change by the force of an impression upon you. And I think, I think, Pastor, we are all recognized within ourselves that need to be a change. That's right. Amen. I cannot do like I at the church. Amen. From the back door uh -huh. through the pulpit yeah. to the choir stand. Right. We all got some things that we can work on. Right. Have we got a witness in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet we also recognize that changes we need are often hard to achieve. Right. If we're going to experience the relationship with Jesus that he want us to experience with him, guess what? That need to be a change in your life. Yeah, 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 amen, yeah. amen. Can I use myself for a little bit? Amen. Yeah, man, yeah. amen. Brother, but Brother Hutchinson, I, 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 I want to lose at least 20 or uh, 40 more pounds. Amen. But uh, I, I need to realize that in order for me to lose those 50 or 40 pounds, they got to be able to change, got to go on in my life. Is that, I, and I need to change some things in my life. And for instance, if I want to lose this weight, I have to change my eating habits. Right, right, right. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you got to change your eating habits. Amen. My, my exercise habit, along with my attitude concerning food. And without changing these areas in my life, guess what? There would be no cure for me to lose my way. Come on, man. Amen. Without changing some things in my life. Amen. 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 How many of you are this day are totally happy where you are in Jesus today? How many of y'all really happy? Amen. Amen. How many of you are really happy? I'm just asking a question. Let me ask you another question. If the Lord come today, would you be ready? <laughs> I'm just trying to help somebody. Amen. Amen. When we give our life to Jesus, we, hear about, we have, have a new life in the Lord. For some of us, we sit back and wait for everything to happen. But I stopped by to tell you today, there's some things you got to work on yourself. Amen. You got to tell the Lord, Lord, I really want to change my life. Yeah, if, we, if we're going to have the life in Jesus, we want the life that he wants us to have, guess what? We got to have some change got to go on in our life. Amen. Some change. Some change that got to go on. Not only the brothers, but I'm talking to the entire church. Because we are lacking. Everybody else is going forward, but we are lacking back because we don't want to change because we're in our comfort zone. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Three, I'm about to tell you today, it's time to step out of the comfort zone. Step out of it. And get on the right track with the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. In, in 1975, Pastor uh, Walter Halton uh, released a song titled Change. On his Love Alive album. Uh -huh. Amen. And he, this song, he talked about change that Jesus made in his life after he accepted him in his life. He listened to some of the words. He said, a change, a, a change has come over me. Yeah. That he has changed my life and now I am free. Uh -huh. He washed away all my sins. Yes, he made me whole. He washed me white as snow. He changed my life complete. Now I can sit. I can sit at his feet. Right. 
to do what must be done. I work and work until he come. He said a wonderful change have come over me. And I got to ask myself, Pastor Bass, what kind of change is he talking about? Is he talking about the transition that take place in our life after we accept Jesus as our person, the Savior? But I stopped by to tell you that once you got Jesus on the inside, it ought to be a change on the outside. Amen. You ought to not come to church Sunday after Sunday the same old person. It ought to be a change somewhere. You come in on Sunday, you sit down in your seat, and you raise your hand, and you praise God, but after church, you are the same old person. It got to be a change somewhere. Tell your neighbor, it got to be a change somewhere. <laughs> Have I got a witness here? Pastor Bass, how do I pray? Listen, how do I pray to God to change my life? Well, you need to say, please guide my heart. Help me to grow into the person you want me to be. Rather than me following my own way, please purify my heart and make me more like you. Please guide my past and help me take my steps that I will guide me towards the plans for my life. And not my own, but I want to be like you. You got to tell the Lord that every day. It got to be a change. It got to be a change. It got to be a change. Now, can I help somebody? The reason why we can't bring nobody to church because we act a fool at the house. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to help somebody. You can't cut your kids out and tell them to come to church on Sunday. It ain't going to happen. All right, Bass, go ahead on now. You got to come. You got to make sure you be on that program for next year. Amen. Be quiet. Amen. Listen, 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 listen. But we got to change. Listen, they say, brother, a change is needed. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're looking at somebody else, but you got to look at yourself. What do I need to change in my life? What do I need to change in order to get closer to the Lord? Amen, amen. Pastor, Pastor Fleming, these first two verses of chapter 12 give us some insight into an area of our walk with God that we never look overlook. These two verses tell us about the life, a life that needs to be changed in the Lord. <clears throat> The first thing, the first thing, I, I, I look at you, the thing, the first thing, if we're going to change, the first thing, brethren, a change is needed. You must totally surrender your life to God. Totally. You must totally, totally. surrender your life to God. Right. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. First Paul said, well, I, I, he said, I beseech you, and, and, and I had to look up the word, beseech means to call up on, right, right. to appear. Paul, Paul said, I'm begging you, I'm, I'm begging you, it, hey. it's time for a change. Time for a change. By the way, he said, therefore, brother, and by the way, he said, I want you to notice that word, brother, is this command of sacrifice. All on the altar of consecration to the Lord Himself. Right. It is a command that is given to every member of the family of God. Family of God. Yeah. Not a single saved person has the right to deny God the pleasure of our bodies. That's right. That's right. And we, we can't say, Lord, you can't do it. No, we all owe God That's right. because of what He's done for us. Right. Right. Have we got to witness Him? Notice, notice um, if you got your Bible, I want you to look in your Bible because we're going to be in Bible country. I'm going to be at the text. I'm going to deal with the text. Let's notice that therefore by the mercy of God. And that phrase carried our mind back to what Paul had been talking about. Paul had been talking about the fact that he had been redeemed. But he redeemed because of the poor grace of God. Right, right. Have a God, we, we may ask why God would think that he can control every aspect 
of our life. And the reason is because it's very simple. Because we owe him because of what he did out on Calvary. Have we got a witness here? We, well, what he did on Calvary, guess what? We have no right to say, Lord, you can't use my body. My God. Because what he did on Calvary. Yes, watch this, watch this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, For ye were bought with a price. Therefore glorify the God in your body and your spirit which are God. And then 1 Corinthians 7 and 23 said, Ye were brought with a pride, be not ye the servant of man. In other words, we owe God everything. Right, right, right. If he want to move, use our body, we ought to be there and say, Lord, here I am. Use me the way you want me to use me. And since that's true, we have no right, no right, no right, brother. We are supposed to be subject to his command regardless of what they are. We ought to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Yeah, I am. Brother, you may not forget that you were headed to hell before you made it. Can I help somebody? Yes, we were headed to hell before we met him. Somebody going to help me out here. Amen. We were on Friday night and Saturday night. We were not at the house studying no Sunday school. We were putting our jeans on and our Stacy Adams and our sharp shirts and we were on our way to the clubhouse. Mm. Have I got a witness there? And, and, and guess can I tell you something? Why you was at the clubhouse, God still had his eyes on you. Somebody gonna help me out here. Have I got a witness here? Some of y'all, guess what? Some of y'all looking at me, but let me tell you something. Somebody went to the club last night. Mm. And they just got home this morning and changed into some church clothes and came to church. But let me tell you something right now. There need to be a change in your life. Can I help somebody there? Have we got a witness here? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we just want to hop in. We just like that in and out hamburger. We want to be in and out. But we'll stay all day to play a football game. And we'll stay overtime to watch basketball. And yeah. Won't even leave your seat. The game three hours, you still sitting there. Tell your wife, go get me a bill. Go get me some milk so I can finish watching the game. And then we get to the church house and they singing song. Pray the Lord, take my hand. You're the friend of having Jesus. You all, oh, don't take all that, girl. Let me tell you something. It take more than that. Somebody gonna help me? We ain't, we ain't care nothing about God. But look at us now. Everybody, look at us now. Look at us now. We're not what we used to be. How many of y'all happy you're not what you used to be? Come on, help me out. Amen. Yeah, man. You're, you're happy you're not what you used to be. Hey, Amen. On Saturday night, you're trying to get ready for Sunday morning. And now half of us, we, that's all we can do. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen here. Uh, may we be like Paul and be aware of the fact over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 10 said, But by grace of God, I am what I am. I am what I am. It's by the, by the grace of God. What you got is nothing but by the grace of God. Have we got a win in May that teach us that while God has the right to issue. Any command, any command to us that he may wish to do. <laughs> and may it also teach us that we do not have the right to say anything but yes, Lord, yeah. hear my, send me. That's right. That's right. We'll call upon to present your bodies. This is right there in the text. It's, if you ain't tore it out, it's right there. It said present your body. This has the reference of the flesh that you and I wear around. We wear that around every day. And I personally believe, Pastor Matthew, that we have been, we've been commended to yield up our bodies to God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Along with our sinful nature. Right, right. Brother, God has called on us to present all that we have. And he are ever willing to help us. He wants us to be like him. The word present means the place at one disposal. Amen. It means that we are no longer holding anything back from God. But we have placed all our all upon the altar of the Lord. Here I am. That's what we got to tell the Lord. Here I am. Here I am. I'm going to 
going to rest and done, but you could use me yes, sir. Yes, sir. any way you want me to. That's right. Is that right? That's right? Yeah, for too many brothers want to be saved, but they're not willing to lay down everything on the altar. Everything. Have I got a witness here? Yes, yeah, they want to be saved. They, they come to church and lay a little stuff down for two hours, but they pick it up right after church. <laughs> but God said, I want it all. Yeah, I don't want you to come in and act like one way on Sunday morning, then after church, after church you acting a different way until next Sunday morning. God said, I want it all. Uh, I, want, I want it all from you because uh, if I get it from you, guess what? You'll be able to help somebody along life way. Is that right? right? We should not present our body to God and want to take it up. The yeah. use it for ourselves. God want it all. Amen. God want it all. Some brothers... Want to give them up on Sunday, but you got to give it all to the Lord. Yes, Listen, we are told that these bodies are to be presented as a living Live. sacrifice. Yeah. Did this sounds like a drill for pain to be used because of the sacrifice, but I stopped by to tell you the sacrifice for them was to die. Right. But the sacrifice for us is to live. Amen. And to be a living sacrifice means that we live every minute of the day as an offering and a service to the Lord. Amen. Every day. God, listen, God, can I tell y'all, can I stop and tell somebody something? God really want to use us. That's right. You're right. Let, let me say it again. Please. God really want to use you. Yeah. But he can't use you because the only thing you got in you is the young and the restless. My the price is right. Judge Judy and all the rest of the shows. See, God wants somebody who is totally sold out for Him. He wants somebody that reads their Bible through the week. He wants somebody who meditate on Him through the week. And God said, if you just give it to me, I can turn you around. And guess what? You'll be able to help somebody along life way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a living sacrifice means that we'll be on the altar wherever we are. A, a living sacrifice means a constant and a continual sacrifice. You never stop. You never stop. It's continuing. God wants somebody who's going to be continuing doing it every day. A, a living sacrifice means that a body sacrifices its own desire for those of God. That's how I'm a ton of God. Here I am. Here I am, God. I'm just a rest and done. Here I am. Use me in your service. A living sacrifice means that the body is devoted to the task of serving God. Amen. When we was out in that street, we gave that street 150%. Come on, help me out. Come on, help me out. Y'all got to help me. We, we, man, we was out there, wasn't we? We was out there. I'm from Louisiana. I know, man, I was out there. They used to tell us on Monday, where the party going to be? Oh, it's going to be over there, but BYB. I said, BYB, what that mean? Bring your own booze. <laughs> and guess what? We got ready. Guess what? We got ready. Yeah. Put our clothes in the cleaners. Yeah. Got them out on Thursday. Yeah. Got our drinks together through the week. Because yes, we know we were going to party on Friday and Saturday and rest on the Lord on Sunday. But look at us now. Look at us now. Look at yourself now. Look at yourself now. You're not what you used to be. Look at yourself now. God has made a change in your life, but he said if you give me more of your life, the more I can change you. I can change it to where you got some people at the house, they'll say, what, who do you know? You tell them I know Jesus. He can make a change in your life. Yeah, living sacrifice means being completed and dedicated to God and not to nobody else. Yeah, he wants us to be committed to him. The next word is the word of holy. Holy means something concentrated and set apart. In other words, you separated. Amen, amen. In reference that, uh, in prayer to religion, it's a religion of all. Amen. When people see that, the idea here is when life is totally sold out, separated and sacrificed to God the Father, yes, it would bring an all and inspiring to somebody. It would demonstrate the power of God like no other. Amen. It would let somebody know God got power to change you. 
Amen. I know some of y'all say, I, I know some of y'all right now say, it's nobody but God changed me. Because I was headed down the wrong road. Have I got a witness here? How many of y'all were headed down the wrong road? And I'm like Brother Pastor said, well, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, <laughs> tell me where would I be? Tell your neighbor, where would I be? Where would I be? He said, not only do you need to be holy, but he said the word acceptable and mean well-pleasing, satisfying. God is pleased when a life is sacrificed on the altar of his service for his glory. His honor him, pastor, like no other thing. He proved that he has power to change one life. That's right. I told one of the ladies at the church, don't give up on him. See, pastor, he's going away. I said, don't give up on him. You just tell God about him. Yeah. Yeah. And in the meantime, you make sure you're right in front of him. That's right. That's right. I've got a witness in See, a lot of times, our kids, we look at our kids, and we say, oh, ain't no help for them. But it could be help if you live right before them. Right. 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 Have I got a witness in Yeah, if you live right before them, guess what? Guess what? They'll, guess what? They'll begin to turn around because what you do is you tell God about with the situation. Right. Right. And then you living right in front of them, guess what? It's going to change after a while. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? A lot of times, the reason why we got hell at the house with our kids because we're trying to live two ways. My God. Trying to live two is hard to do. Yes, sir. That song says I need a... <laughs> it's hard to do. Say, I need a man to go to work. I need somebody to stay at home. Is that right? But listen here, if you got Jesus, you don't need nobody to stay at the house. Because you got Jesus in your house. Have I got a witness in? All I'm trying to tell us today is, baby, we need to change. A change is needed in our house. A change is needed in our houses because if we get the house right, guess what? Everything else is going to be right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Paul says, tell us to yield our bodies to the Lord as a reasonable service. And this word reasonable comes from the same word which means logic. Yeah. So first we, first we are to see that yielding our body to the Lord is logical. And then the word service uh, comes from the word which means to perform a sacred service. It has the reference to the function of the Levite performing in the tabernacle in the temple. It is a constant connect to the idea of worship. And therefore, this phrase means that yielding our bodies to the Lord and all is saying logical service of worship before the Lord. Amen. If you really want to get your praise on, yeah. on Sunday morning, yeah. spend some time with him through the week. Have we got a witness here? If you want to be able to praise the Lord and shout on Sunday morning, I dare you just start, pre just start praising him through the week. Start spending some time in the Bible. Start reading your Bible. And then when you get to church on Sunday morning, and they're going to look at you and say, what's going on? You say, I spent some time with the Lord. Anybody want to be different on next Sunday? Anybody want to be different on next Sunday? Anybody want to be different on next Sunday? Spend some time with the Lord. Is that right? I don't want to hold y'all long, but the second thing, the second thing, brother, with a change is needed. Watch this, watch this. When you get the mind to change, the bottle will follow along. <laughs> when you get the mind to change, the body will follow along. Listen what it said. Verse 2a. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul moved from dealing with your body to dealing with the mind. Here's the root of all our problems anyway. When we get the mind to thinking as it should, then the body will obediently follow after. That's right. Renewing your mind, according to Romans, 
uh, verse 12 to mean to interpret life through the lens of God's eyes yes, and not through the lens of your own eyes. Right, right. Have got to and, and, and listen here. And when you go through God's eyes, God would help you to be mature in your religion. Have I got a witness then? Listen here, listen here. Listen, he said, listen what he said. We are commanded to be not conformed to this world. And, and that word conform means to fashion or shape. It, it literally means mold. Amen. We, we got to stop letting folk mold us. Have I got a witness here? How, Pastor Bass, how is they molding us? Everything is on TV. Everything is on the phone. Have I got a witness in? I'm just trying to help y'all. Yeah. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to mold us yeah. in the way they want us to be. Right, right. But when you going to turn around and mold them into what God wants them to be? Have I got a witness in? We, we, we got a lot of folk. Listen, I tell folk, if you know, you can't, if you know you've been drinking and you're you trying to stop, you don't need to hang around them no more. Let them go. I don't care what they call you. Let them go. Because you're trying to change your life. You can't change your life if you know you, you can't attempt that drink. Yeah. You, 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 guess what? You need to say, you know what, brother? I really love y'all, but I'm trying to change my life. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm trying to change my life to be more like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So, brother, I love y'all, but I got to step away because I, I, I can't do this no more. Right, right, right. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. Yeah, you smoking mushroom, spending all your tired money, and you can't do it but come in and beg on Sunday. It's time to let go of that mushroom and that dope. Amen. Hey, somebody laugh, man. You want to talk about pastor? Amen. Listen, what I'm trying to say is, listen, you got to let some stuff go. Yeah. If you know you can't do that and you're trying to change you all this, and not, listen, I'm through. I can't do that no more. Right. I'm trying to be like Jesus. 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 I don't want to be like nobody else. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I want to change my life. So when my time comes for me to die, I want to hear him say, well done. Yes, sir. Have I got a witness here? So we, 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 cannot, we cannot let them mold us That's right. in the way they go. Right. Sometimes you got to walk away. I told my church, I had, a, I had a, a friend, great friend. I was trying to, I, I said, man, I can't drink no more. I said, I was brought up the right way. Yeah. I said, man, I didn't start drinking until I was 18 because I raised up in a pastor house. Yeah. I said, but man, I can't do that no more. Yeah. He said, oh man, man oh man, you, you could do it. You just, all. I said, no man, I got to change, man. I'm, I'm, I got to change that. I'm, I'm tired of getting drunk on Friday and Saturday and then I'm praying on my knees on Sunday morning. I'm tired of that. I know Jesus. I know Jesus wants more from me. Right. Right. I ain't going to let you mold me. Right. 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 When I leave the house, he used to have a key come to my house and when I get back home, he'd been on fried some chicken bats and got a, some liquor on the table. Jack Daniel. I'm just trying to help somebody. I had to call him on the phone. I said, man, I said, listen, listen. He said, man, I said, I really love you, but when you come today, give me your, my key. He said, man, that ain't right. You're my brother. I said, yeah, but I told you I'm trying to change. I ain't going to let you mold me into what you want. I know how God brought me up. God brought me a long ways. And what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm not going to let you mold me into drinking no more. That's right. I got my key, and now I'm drinking from the fountain. <laughs> They'll never run dry. <laughs> have we got a witness here? We ought to have somebody here testifying today. Anybody drinking from the fountain? They'll never run dry. <laughs> You ain't got to worry about a hangover, but you got to hang up on Jesus. <laughs> I believe that, Lord. I believe that. Listen, not only that, not only that, not only that, we are commanded to transform by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. And, and the, the word transform give us the English word metamorphosis. It, it's tried the transformation of a caterpillar goes through become a butterfly. Right. 
And, and did you not know that the caterpillar and the butterfly are the same creature? And, and what happened when the, when the caterpillar entered the cocoon, it, it later emerged at that part of that insect. And it resides on the inside as a lot of the manifests on the outside. And what it is, brethren, that that change, this is the change that God wants in our lives. Yes, Not on the outside, but you ought to have a change on the inside. And when, when, when you open your mouth, somebody know that you've been changed yeah. by God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You see, he moved into our heart when he saved us. He transformed our spirit and changed us into his child as being a child of his. What, 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 what we must remember is that the flesh will do what the mind tell it to do. But if you've been in the word of God, you've been praying, you've been meditating on the word of God, guess what? When you open your mouth, somebody's going to say, you talking to nothing about Jesus. Last week you were talking about someone. She said, yeah, but I've been changed. I've been changed. I got my mind. My mind has been changed. Amen. And I stopped by to tell somebody today, it's all about your mind. You get the mind right, everything else is going to be right. Yeah. And I stopped by to tell somebody, don't focus on yourself while you have fallen down, but you need to focus on Jesus. Because Jesus can pick you up and turn you around. Brothers, just keep filling your mind with the word of God. Brothers, just keep filling your mind with prayer every day. Brothers, just keep waiting on God, and God will fix it for you. But you got to learn to wait on God. Is anybody going to wait on God today? Anybody going to wait on God? The good news is that waiting is always worth it. Yeah, I heard Isaiah say, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up like wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary, but they shall walk and not faint. It's good to wait on the Lord. Tell your neighbor it's good to wait on the Lord. Tell your other neighbor it's good to wait on the Lord. The last thing, the last thing, brethren, a change is needed. When the world see you living right, they will know that you've been changed by God's power. Yeah, when the world See you living right. living right. They will know that you've been changed by the power of God. Yes, sir. This is what it says, that ye may be proved what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. You, Paul moved on to tell us that when we accomplish these two things in our lives, mm. when you totally surrender your life to God, yes, when you get your mind to change, the body will follow along. Yes, Paul said we will be able to carry out the will of the Lord in our life. Yes, Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. As you yield your body and our mind to the Lord, God will become more clear and more important to you. Yes, By yielding our bodies and our mind to the Lord, We'll be able to prove or live our God's will before a world that is looking at us. When the world see you and me living the way God wants us to live, yes. they will know that we've been transformed by the word of God. Right. And I thank God today for his grace. Yes. And as a result, I get him where the Lord can bless our lives every day. <clears throat> Souls will be saved. <laughs> and God will honor us. Yeah, we will be a inspired weapon to the world. That I've been changed by the hands of the Lord. <clears throat> Is that right? We'll prove positive and let nobody know that I've been changed by the Lord. <clears throat> Brethren, regardless of what God may ask you to do, you need to tell the Lord, here I am. Use me in your service. Brethren, don't be afraid. The will of God in your life.
Jesus can cause it is good. Brethren, nothing could be added to God's plan would improve your pain. Yeah, when he reveals his will to you, he will tell you, I'm ready to move you to the next stage. Yeah, that right. His plan then cannot hinder you, but his plan can make you better. Yeah, that right. Is there anybody here who thought plan for your life? You ought to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you follow God's plan, everything will be all right. Is that right? When God uses you, He is telling you that I need your help to go bring that man or that woman to Christ. Is that right? Is there anybody here today that loves the Lord? Lord, I say it. Say it. Say it. Listen to him. Before I heard it to a close, I heard a preacher, Deacon Hudson, I heard a preacher say that he used to work in the field and he called in the house. And mama uh, would have a cake uh, on the stove. Uh, but when some days uh, he go out and come in, uh, he just see the ingredients. Uh, and he said that uh, what the reason of the story was, uh, some of us uh, is not complete. Uh, God uh, got to put us in the bowl uh, and stir us around. Uh, have a God of witness. Uh, he got to put the mystery and stir us around you got to put the nasty ingredient and stir us around and then you got to put us in the oven and turn the heat up and when you come out of the oven when you come out of the oven you can sing the song I have decided to follow Jesus I have no turning back, no turning back. So go with me. I still will follow. No one will go with me, but I still follow. Is there anybody here today gonna follow the law? You ought to say yeah. Is there anybody here who gonna follow the law? You ought to say yeah. Every day, use me in the service, and God will use you in the service. I mean, you know He will. Have you tried it for yourself? If you want the Lord to use you in His service, you got to get closer every day. You got to get closer every day. You got to say, Lord, here I am. Use me in your service, and God will use you in your service. I mean, you know He'll use it. You ought to say, Yeah. Anybody know He'll use it? You ought to stand on your feet and give God a round of applause. God will use you in your service, but you got to learn to trust in the Lord. You got to learn. To give it to the Lord, and He will. Anybody know you make everything all right? You ought to say yeah. Anybody know Jesus? Say yeah. You were born in Bethlehem. Say yeah. Have the body with me. He died. Anybody know He died? Died on Friday. Died on 
don't know about you. But I He's all right. <laughs> <laughs>